The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one for long to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. Good morning and welcome to Let's Go Racing. I'm Danny Gibson here with Dick Girardi and we have some great racing action to get to you today. We're gonna head down to the fairgrounds for the grade three Louisiana and the Lecomte Stakes Kentucky Derby prep race. <laughs> And the ladies are going to be on the scene up at Aqueduct with some Phillies and Mare steak action. And some local horses are competing in the Grade 1 Pegasus World Cup for $3 million today down at Gulfstream Deck. Yeah, it's the first big race of the year, Danny. It'll be on NBC today at 4.30. Uh, the favorite is probably going to be Nick's go, who was so impressive winning the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. No strategy. They'll just try to send him to the front. Code of Honor, Tax. We're also talking our former Pennsylvania Derby winner, Math Wizard, will be in the race. And you said Claudio Gonzalez has a yeah. horse in as well, right? Harper's first ride. Angel Cruz is going to get the mount. So Very nice. He's been down there. Uh, he had to work over the track and uh, talk to Claudio. He's really excited for that. So Yeah, so it's our first real big racing day of the year. There will also be the Pegasus Turf, five other graded stakes. Great car at Gulf Street Park today. They're going to have live coverage on NBC 10 at 4.30, and they're going to have a jockey cam this year, which I think is pretty cool. That should be cool. very interesting to see how that plays out. Mm -hmm. With America's Best Racing. <laughs> Let's get into some racing action. We're going to head to Parks for Monday's ninth race. It was an allowance race going a mile and 70. Pretty stacked field for horses running for $41,000 purse here. Yeah, and, and Bobby Mosco had a great day. Had the favorite in here, star sign for our man Jack Armstrong. Just really solid form. Doesn't run too many bad races. 15 starts, four wins, four seconds, three thirds. Our second choice favorite was Ocram at four to one. Um, you know, definitely deserves second choice. He ran down in the claiming crown. Uh, very consistent horse for Carlos Milan. He did. Another one. I just like these horses that always give you an effort. Ocram is certainly one of them. 39 lifetime starts, Danny, six, four, and six. And our girl Kate DeMassey has violent turbulence at eight to one. You know, he just broke his maiden. He's mm -hmm. going up against older horses, proven horses, so uh, pretty exciting to see how he'll do here. Yeah, jumping up into the A other than, but that's obviously the next logical spot, and as you said, has to go against older now. Gets jockey Frankie Pennington. Let's see how the race unfolds. Inside, violent turbulence left well from the uh, extreme center. There goes Celtic Treasure with screen saber in between rivals. Star sign comes away fifth. Once the inside, skipping on Orchard is sixth. They make their way around the turn. Out wide is the gray Okram, about seven lengths off the lead. A length and a half clear of quality choice, who's wide of over sensual and trailing the field last of all. About five now, six lengths detached from the field is the Robert as they start their journey up the bank stretch. And on top with the lead, it's by and turbulence and the outside Celtic treasures right alongside second star signs in prime stalking mode third a length back to screen sabers to the inside of Okram fourth and fifth respectively two lengths back to Paul the waiter who is next outside of that one trying to come on his quality choice as they make the way towards the farm turn 23 and two for the opening quarter and it's violent turbulence who has the lead Celtic treasure is right there second towards the inside screen saber is next star sign moves up now into a narrow third Okram's a length back fifth around the turn. All the waiters out widest towards the inside over Central is trying to kick in. A bit of traffic for him. About six lengths off the lead. Three lengths clear of quality choice. Trying to rally on the Roberts. Still ten lengths of work for him to do. And skipping on Orchard drops out to last. It's still violent turbulence. The one to catch. Ocrom's out widest now. They straighten away for the stretch drive. Violent turbulence leads it by a length and a half. Ocrom had to shift in. Star signs in between rivals. Screensavers trying to kick in at the rail. Mid stretch violent turbulence inside star sign is reaching now Okram's bit is stalled from far back the Robert is gaining very very quickly violent turbulence inside star sign the Robert absolutely flying they come down to the finish violent turbulence or star sign it's very close violent turbulence just game effort on the finish with jockey Frankie Pennington yeah got loose on the lead got challenged got away from the field looks like he's gonna win pretty easily and then whoa it was getting close there at the end <laughs> held on by a nose at eight to one owners pewter stable and Spadelli family racing Sal Spadelli had a really good week his horse Venezuelan hug by Danny uh, trained by Danny Gargan mm -hmm. won on Sunshine Millions Day in the turf so uh, well, that big go. handsome gray so I'll good say. day for that owner absolutely good 
the week. <laughs> Time to head into our first break. When we get back on national coverage, we're going to head down to the fairgrounds for the Grade 3 LeComp. Kentucky points on the line. When we get back on Let's Go Racing. Midnight Bourbon, who controls the pace here for Joe Telemo. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Pewter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the Mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. If you want action and you want it now, you gotta get the new Parks Racing mobile app. Wager and watch thoroughbred and harness racing from around the world. With the Parks Racing mobile app, it's easy to open and fund your account. Then, place your wagers and cheer on your horse as they thunder down the stretch. With the Parks Racing mobile app, you'll easily make withdrawal requests, view the previous day's replays and results. Plus, open any new account now and you'll be automatically enrolled in the Parks Rewards program. The more you wager, the more you earn. Get the new Parks Racing mobile app and get in on the action. Did you know the Pennsylvania horse racing industry spends tens of millions of dollars supporting agriculture? From local farmers and farm workers to veterinarians and more. And we do it with zero tax dollars while creating tens of thousands of jobs. Welcome back to the Let's Go Racing Show. Our national coverage is brought to you by the Chapman Auto Group. If their emblem's not on the back of your car or truck, you probably did pay too much. Right now we're going to head down to the fairgrounds for the grade three LeCompte Stakes. A mile and 16th going on the dirt, three-year-old derby prep, Kentucky Derby points on the line. Yeah, here. this is probably the first significant, certainly in the east. We did have the sham already out at Santa Anita, but for a derby prep, uh, Mandaloon the 10 is the four to five favorite. Brad Cox, anytime he runs anything these days, they get bet. This horse was impressive and two wins owned by the Judmont Farms of uh, Prince Khalid Abdullah, who just recently passed away. Huge loss to the racing industry there. No I know question. Brad Cox said he could not wait to get this horse around T-turns. Midnight Bourbon, number one, seven to two for Steve Asmussen. Actually gets Joe Talamo up. Ricardo Santana was listed. He did not make the trip down to fairgrounds. So second in the Iroquois, Danny, last September, then uh, distant third in the Champagne, but that was a really fastly run race. So Midnight Bourbon has the rail. Will he show speed in this race? So Midnight Bourbon just leads them for Joe Telemo, proxy in the good dolphin blue, and Mandaloon is stacked three wide as they enter the clubhouse turn. Arabian Prince up the inside trail, regular guy running in fifth with on the outside. Game day play in sixth as they go to the back of the track. Then comes Red and Wild and dropping back to last is Santa Cruiser. The opening quarter in 24.68 seconds with just inside six furlongs to run. And the leader is Midnight Bourbon, who controls the pace here for Joe Telemo. Midnight Bourbon leads proxy by two. Mandaloon, third on the outside. With saving ground, Arabian Prince. Regular guy is five from the leader in fifth. Followed by Game Day Play, who's running a wide sixth. And then comes Red and Wild. And Santa Cruiser remains last to the eight. They go past the half-mile pole here in the LeCompte in 48.99 seconds. It's Midnight Bourbon, who leads proxy. And Mandaloon. Right there on the outside with three furlongs to go. It's Midnight Bourbon. Mitchell Morrow makes a move with Proxy between horses. The Ron Giroux and Mandaloon. Green with a pink sash being driven now to engage. Proxy and Midnight Bourbon. Then regular guy and Arabian Prince. They straighten past the quarter pole. Top of the stretch, three quarters. One minute, 13.57 seconds. Against the rail, it's Midnight Bourbon. Midnight Bourbon leads them into the final furlong. Leads by three. Mandaloon and Proxy, they battle it out. It's still Midnight Bourbon past the 16th. Midnight Bourbon, Proxy, Mandaloon, Gamely. Here it is for Midnight Bourbon. Wins the Lecompte, holds Proxy and Mandaloon. Wow, and Midnight Bourbon, <laughs> great finish there, gate to wire. Yeah, it got loose. Uh, nobody could ever run them down. I think people keep waiting. There's this long stretch at the fairgrounds to keep waiting for these speed horses to come back. This horse never came back. 91 buyer, good number. Going to have to go better. The favorite just really was in the race, Mandaloon, but never really had a lot of punch. Ended up finishing third. Got every chance. Proxy ran second for Michael Stidham. Uh, drifting a little bit in the late stretch, and it was kind of like him and Mandaloon were in their own race, yeah. but really nice second for him. And 
Yeah, a lot of times when you see these horses loose, you're not sure what that means in the in overall context. What happens when they get in a race where there's other horses around, horses back in fifth. But for today, uh, in this one, in this prep, and we'll go to the Risen Star next, it's Midnight Burp. Joe Talamo said he was just happy to be a passenger and couldn't be a better great guy. He was here for the Pennsylvania Derby a few years ago, mm -hmm. very generous with his time, yep. donating autographs and signatures for Turning for Home for the nice. PDJF. So good to see him get a chance here. We're going to stay at the fairgrounds for the Grade 3 Louisiana. Older horses going a mile and 16th. Yeah, mile and 16th, uh, interesting distance there. Again, we have uh, it's a, a long run through the stretch. Wells Bayou is going to be the favorite. Now, is that a name anybody's familiar with? Well, it should be, because he won the Louisiana Derby at this track last March. Uh, he was in one of the divisions of the Arkansas Derby, ran behind a doll, and that was it. We haven't heard from him since. He was on the Derby trail, he got off, and now he's on the comeback trail for, yes, that man, Brad Cox. Bio, it just sounds like a name that should be down in Louisiana, too. Blackberry Wine, our second choice favorite at three to one for Joe Sharp, and uh, gets Adam Basitza. Yeah, Blackberry Wine, most recently, really powerhouse win in the op optional claimer at Fairgrounds. Danny got a 98 buyer. If he can come anywhere back to that number, that's, that's going to be good enough to win the race. Blackberry Wine, who leads them into the clubhouse turn. Kendall Riding on the gold sleeves, is fourth upon settling, joined down the outside by Sonneman. Silver Prospector comes up the rail, just inside, seven furlongs to go. And under the hands of Sean Bridgemahan, captivating moon, trails the Stakes Septet. The opening quarter for Blackberry Wine slows them up. 25.28 seconds. No early pace on Blackberry Wine, who's allowed to dictate terms as Florent Giroux has Wells Bayou in the pursuer's role. For the inside is Graham Luigi running in third by two. Title ready in fourth. It's a break of two more to Silver Prospector, who's racing inside of Sonneman. Captivating Moon remains last. They go past the half mile pole. Four furlongs in 49.53. Blackberry Wine, Wells Bayou, Grand Luigi, title ready, still evenly in fourth, but now with three furlongs to go. And Blackberry Wine still to reel in. Silver Prospector, Sideman leads only the wide, captivating moon. It's Blackberry Wine. Wells Bayou's been right there as shadow. Blackberry Wine arrives at the quarter pole with a two length lead. Three quarters in one minute, 13.91 seconds. Blackberry Wine leads Wells Bayou, who's in full stretch, title ready now, takes his shot on the outside in the furlong grounds. It's Blackberry Wine roused, title ready. Wells Bayou's third, Sonneman and Silver Prospector. Here's title ready for Brian Hernandez Jr. Gets the lead close to home, title ready on top. Takes the Louisiana Stakes for Blackberry Wine. And the classy title ready getting it done with Brian Hernandez Jr., who had two stake wins on the day down there. Yeah, Chuck Fipke and Dallas Stewart, certainly accommodations, won a lot of races. And this is the classic class relief. The source's last two races, Breeders' Cup Classic behind Authentic, and then more recently he was in the Clark against Bodie Express and Code of Honor. Back where he belongs, ran great, got a 98 buyer. Yeah, when he was set down, man, he was right there. He was on the wrong lead, but looked good doing it. Win anyway. Blackberry Wine held on for a second. Third was Wells Bayou, so favorites kind of around one, two, three. Yeah, Brad Cox had a lot of favorites and not a lot of winners on the card, so people, that's not very unusual for him because he wins a lot of races as favorites, but no good last Saturday at the Fairgrounds. We're going to head up to Aqueduct for the ladies handicapped going a mile and eighth on the dirt. $100,000 stakes here. Yeah, we had lucky move in here. This is the most interesting, obviously, for us. This is Carlos Guerrero in 10 straight. Most recently, she is a New York bred. She won the, the Bay Ridge up at, at Aqueduct on the 13th of December with our man Kendrick. But Kendrick says, I don't think I'm riding for you today. I'm going to ride thankful for Todd Pletcher. And obviously, if Todd wants you to ride, that's what you do. So Kendrick on thankful and, and Miss Marissa, the Black Eyed Susan winner. It's a pretty good field, but yeah, our eyes were on Lucky Move. The field makes their way on the clubhouse turn. Miss Marissa's a length in front of thankful. Ujai along the inside. Length and a half back in third. They're smooth with a kick in fourth. Two and a half back to I'm Impossible. Lucky Move trails the opening quarter. A slow 25 seconds flat. Miss Marissa leads them on a comfortable length and a half lead. Thankful second. Ujai is third. Smooth with a kick. Two and a half lengths from the leader in fourth. Gap of a length and a half to Am Impossible. Lucky move trails. Seven lengths from the lead. 49 and four for the half. 
Jose Lascano just took a peek back on Miss Marissa. He sees that Thankful's a length away. Ujai two lengths back in third. Smooth with a kick under a ride in fourth. Am impossible and lucky move trail. Not much has changed as the field makes their way. Midway on the far turn, Miss Marissa, thankful, ratchets up the pressure in second, smooth with a kick, past Ujai into third, lucky move, and I'm impossible, a half a dozen lengths from the lead, three quarters and one fourteen and four, Miss Marissa braces for thankful's challenge, these two have a length and a half on Ujai, who swings outside, far outside, lucky moves out of last, they're passing the eighth pole, Miss Marissa and thankful are trying to hold off the late rally of Ujai, lucky move down the center, thankful. Thankful took the lead away from Miss Marissa. Here comes Ujai. Thankful Miss Marissa. Ujai. Thankful wins the ladies by three parts of a length. And Jackie Kendra Carmouche. Thankful he rode. Thankful to that win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, when Todd Pletcher wants to ride for you, and this was a four-win day for Kendrick, including three for Todd. You even have to abandon your friend sometime. I know he loves Carlos and Ten Strike because they've been good to him. They've been good for each other. But yeah, Todd, once you're in, 88 buyer for thankful. Miss Marissa ran really well, the Black Eyed Susan winner. Unfortunately, Lucky Move was really inhibited by the pace, Danny. 25 50, 115. She's a one run closer. She really didn't have a chance. She closed to finish fourth. But yeah, she needs a different kind of circumstance to run her best. Definitely. And track was a little deep that day. Thankful. That's her first stake score. So awesome for her. That Kendrick's just in the zone. He, he, and uh, he is was on fire up there. He is ahead by like 14 in front and as went dominating the winter jockey standings just like he did the fall standings at Aqueduct. Can't be happier for a better guy in Mr. Ertz. So Jose Lascano did say the track was a little deep for her, so it definitely didn't help our girl Lucky move. We're going to head into our next break. When we come back, jockey and trainer of the week, I wonder who it'll be. Stick around on Let's Go Racing. Breeding thoroughbreds is a complicated business, but one that is done for the love of the horse and the sport of horse racing. Founded in 1948, the Pennsylvania Horse Breeders Association is a not-for-profit organization focused on the breeding and care of thoroughbred horses. PHBA is responsible for managing all aspects of the Pennsylvania Breeding Fund and the official registration, marketing, and promotion of Pennsylvania-bred thoroughbred racehorses. PHBA works with industry leaders to help bring reform and benefits to breeders, owners, racetracks, and the general public. Breeding thoroughbreds is a unique and gratifying lifestyle, one that allows participants an experience unmatched in its emotional intensity and in the enduring social relationships it forges. Whether you're currently a breeder or considering getting involved in this exciting industry, the Pennsylvania Horse Breeders Association can help in your quest to master the complexities of breeding a thoroughbred. Welcome back on Let's Go Racing. Our Jockey and Trainer of the Week is brought to you by Turning for Home, our racehorse retirement program here at Parks, safely assisting uh, thoroughbreds in a safe retirement. Our Jockey of the Week is who? Kendrick Carmouche. Yeah, we're taking a little <laughs> bit of liberty here, but look, he's been in New York for several years now, Danny, but he's he's a Parks jockey. Yeah. Let's deal with the reality here. He's a Parks Hall of Famer. It's always great to see our guys when they go out of town and in Kendrick's case permanently, although he does come in and ride every once in a while, do as well as he's doing. And right now, and he just, his birthday, by the way, was uh, Monday, uh, he is riding as well as he ever has. And that's saying a lot, because he's been a good rider for a long time. Just a great guy, and like Indeed. you said, he's one of our own, so Absolutely. we want to celebrate his successes with him. Um, and our trainer of the week is Bobby Mosco. What a great, he had a great week. He had ran four horses on Monday, Th two wins, almost three wins, Oof. and uh, all four right in the money, one, two, three. Yeah, so. Bobby's always been a high percentage guy, and of course he's one of Jack Armstrong's trainer, and Jack is another guy who's in our Hall of Fame. Bobby's one of the good guys, always does the right thing, and, and his owners always do the right thing, big supporter of Turning for Home and everything we do here, so well done for him. We're going to head into Race Recap, brought to you by Peter Stable. Check him out at www.peterstable.com. Check them out, become an owner today. One of the great partnerships here in the Mid-Atlantic region. And now we're gonna head back up to Aqueduct for the Franklin Square. And the big favorite here is Lao Ban on a Prayer, the New York bred, uh, three, now three-year-old filly that we've seen a couple of times on the show win stakes races up there for our man, Danny Velasquez. This is Kendrick and Danny. 
Big favorite at three to five, the four horse. She's fifth early, then third. Looks like maybe she's gonna finally get there, but secret love for John Kimmel is gonna win this thing. And I think the fact that, Danny, that she was closer to the pace may have been part of the reason. And uh, I think maybe Laoban on a prayer wasn't quite as sharp maybe as she was in those races in uh, October and December. Jackie Kendrick actually said she had missed a little bit training and you have to be ready when you come to New York. Uh, Danny just thought she would be good enough to do it on her own and still very classy. Right, no shame second. in her second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she went a but, lot of races up there this year. Oh, New York definitely. Friends. Secret love. John Kimmel had a lot of confidence in her. Um, told, told to keep Pablo, told her to keep her forwardly placed. Yep. And uh, first stakes win and first on the off track. So 13 to one, she was the longest shot on our board. Yeah, she was she was good, but yeah, loud man on a prayer is not through winning New York for hit stakes in 2021. Back to our fairgrounds for the Silver Bullet Day, $150,000, one mile and 70 yards for three-year-old fillies. Yeah, super sensational. Uh, the one is the second choice here for Mark Cassie. She's coming from way back. We've said it all, all day long, Sun Path to nine, three to five favorite for Brad Cox, sits the perfect trip again for Judmont and just has nothing in the stretch. Charlie's Penny, Chris Block, runs away from the field here late at nine to one to win by more than three lengths and brad cox at three to five is fourth he just had a horrible day a lot of money lost on brad cox horses saturday at the fairgrounds yeah it definitely wasn't his day charlie's penny she was one of the smaller fillies really narrow but she gave everything for her win um so they are going to point her towards the rachel alexandra uh excited to see if uh you know this filly can continue on brian hernandez like we said earlier just having a day a couple stakes wins I'm, on that car. Yeah, I'm a big fan. He's not a guy who gets a lot of national publicity, but anytime you ever bet on him, his horse is always in the right place. I like Brian Hernandez. Be interesting to see how many of these fillies do move forward to the Rachel Alexandra and keep moving towards the Kentucky Oaks. We're gonna actually going to head back to Aqueduct for the Interborough on Monday, Martin Luther King Day. $100,000, Phillies and Mares for going seven furlongs. Yeah, 10 Strike and Carlos had a great day here Monday at Parks with two winners, and they have Portal Creek in here, four to five. And boy, on paper, she looks like she's supposed to beat these horses. Uh, Kendrick's got her up close, but it's kind of a pace duel. With, and I don't really know why this horse was involved in the pace duel, but was. Ends up running Portal Creek out of the race. Huge long shot. Bella Aurora is going to come roaring from the back of the field. 37 to 1 if Keith Jones was here. That would be worth a hello. Hello. Yeah, Vargas just came flying up the fence and uh, jokingly later he recently got engaged that he had to pay for a wedding. So <laughs> very happy for him and trainer Michael Trombetta. Really nice. Um, love to see when these long shots. Yeah, 37 to 1 is always fun, especially if we have money on them. I had nothing on this horse. I actually was thinking about betting on Portal Creek, but the, she got bet down right at the end of 4 to 5, which was a little silly. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a big 4 to 5 fan. Well, good thing 10 Strike and Carlos, they still had, they a, had great, a good enough day. They had a great day last Monday at Park, so happy for them. See where Portal Creek lands next. It's going to be time for our eye on racing. So lots coming up. Today we have the Pegasus World Cup Grade 1. Three million dollars. Right, and the Pegasus turf and five other graded stakes. We have sprints, we got root races on the dirt, we got root races on the turf. It's just gonna be a great car, and of course it's gonna culminate as we said at the top, 430 on NBC. You'll see the big races, and of course all the races you can bet on them right ahead of parks. All the top jockeys, all the trainers, check out our local horses. We got Math Wizard Connections gonna be running and Harper's first ride. So just thrilled for them and then also, Oaklawn started, so we got Oaklawn action. Yep. There's a couple of stakes there. San Anita has a grade three Pelos Vertes for sprinters, and Aqueduct will have the Jazzle stakes. Yeah, and we'll have, we'll have everything. We'll figure out what the best ones are. We'll have them on the show next week. We're going to head into a break. When we come back, news and notes. Don't go anywhere on Let's Go Racing. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. 
If you want action and you want it now, you got to get the new Parks Racing mobile app. Wager and watch thoroughbred and harness racing from around the world. With the Parks Racing mobile app, it's easy to open and fund your account. Then place your wagers and cheer on your horse as they thunder down the stretch. With the Parks Racing mobile app, you'll easily make withdrawal requests, view the previous day's replays and results. Plus, open any new account now and you'll be automatically enrolled in the Parks Rewards program. The more you wager, the more you earn. Get the new Parks Racing mobile app and get in on the action. Turning for Home is a nonprofit that has provided nearly 2,800 former racehorses with a safe retirement. The program was created through the foresight of the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. We all love animals, and to give back to something that helps us so much, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Responding to the need for a better system that addressed the uncertain future for the retiring equine population at Parks Racing, the PTHA rallied horsemen to support the program. These horses can do anything from hunter jump to Western to therapeutic riding. Turning for Home became the first on-track retirement program at our year-round racetrack. We want to make sure that our horses that have run so well for us over the years get the great opportunity to get a new vocation. Out of everything that we've done in Pennsylvania for racing, I think that's the thing we can be most proud of. If you would like to help these amazing animals find a great second career and forever home, please give us a call or contact us at turningforhome.org. We're back on Let's Go Racing. News and notes brought to you by the Granny Fund. The Granny Fund helps uh, further education here on our backstretch, helps with funding for that, so love our Granny Fund. Dick, so lots going on. The Eclipse Award finalists were announced. Yeah, they were announced Saturday. Uh, the actual awards themselves, the winners will be announced uh, in a week or so. VQuest, obviously a finalist for two-year-old Philly. Uh, Danny and I actually wrote about it on letsgoracingparks.com this week. Dad at the office, also a finalist, and Pearl. Now, if you're concerned that uh, Vequist might not get it, don't be, because a very similar situation happened two years ago with, uh, with Jaywalk, a newspaper of record. It was really right. good on the turf, and Jaywalk won, in a, won easily, and I think the same thing's going to happen. I think Vequist will win, and Butch Reed will get his first champion, and I know it'll be great for him and Jenny and the whole family. Oh, I know he's so excited. Great article on them and the Blood Horse, talking about them and their success with Bequist. She's actually had her second work now down at Palm Meadows, and she's doing fabulous. So yeah, she's very thriving. Nice. Yeah, everything we see, when the pictures that, that Jenny has sent up, and I know, Danny, you've seen them, and I have, she just looks bigger and stronger. And you have to be. you gotta, you got to grow a little bit into a three-year-old, but yeah, I can't wait to see her run. Danny V said uh, Brooklyn Strong will actually mix the Withers, our Remsen winner, um, came up a little sick, missed some training, but uh, tell us about what's going to be. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure exactly what Danny's going to do yet. There's maybe some talk about Florida for a fountain of youth, but yeah, got a little sick, missed some training time, nothing disastrous, but look, when you have a three-year-old on the Derby Trail, you don't want to miss anything, yeah. uh, but if you're going to miss it, better in January than March or, or April, but so no withers uh, and, and so no match with Capo Kane, the park stool. But as far as I can tell, Harry Weiner's still good for Capo Kane next month in the withers at Aqueduct. Yeah, I saw in our Tony Como. He's still beaming with uh, smiles from the <laughs> Capo Kane victory. So more to come on that story to see uh, with our three-year-old shaping up here. So thank you so much for joining us on Let's Go Racing. Me and Dick had a great time. Mm -hmm. We did. We always do. <laughs> Come join us out at Parks. We race Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, post time 1225. We'll see you next week.